No matter how fit you are, when you exert yourself in training or in sporting competition, you rapidly generate heat in the actual muscles you are working. This is why even at the start of a workout, your third or fourth set of bench press, for example, will yield fewer reps than your first, or your third or fourth sprint will be slower than your first. As a workout continues, your core body temperature rises. Your body then diverts blood to the skin to lose heat through sweating. But in doing so, less blood is supplied to the working muscles that need it, and your heart has to work harder, pumping blood further. This limits performance for every athlete, and some suffer more than others. What a lot of people don't realise is that most cooling methods, such as iced water, cooling jackets, ice packs, cold towels, simply do not work. One, they try and cool from the outside in through your skin and your tissues, which are excellent insulators. Two, they are very often too cold. This causes the surface arteries to constrict, moving blood away from the skin. This is why your skin will turn pale when exposed to the cold. This prevents heat loss, raising your core temperature further and actually increasing your fatigue. The solution is core control, sold in Europe by CoreCool. Core control uses the pull of a slight vacuum in this chamber to increase blood volume in the hand's arteries, which are specifically designed for heat loss. This pull brings the warm blood into close contact with the cooling cone and is cooled at a minimum of 10 degrees so as not to cause the arteries to constrict. This cooler blood is naturally pumped to the working muscle tissues, cooling the actual area where the heat is being generated. We can see from this infrared image that most of the body's heat is lost through the head and the special arteries in the hands. What is happening is the blood which is flowing into the palm of his hand is being cooled by these radiator structures in the hand. That blood is going back to the core of his body and cooling from the inside out. You're cooling where the heat load has, has accumulated. If you stick your hand in cold water, what happens is those blood vessels shut down. It's what keeps you from losing excess heat. And what you're doing is you're impeding heat loss and therefore your core temperature actually goes up. The remarkable discovery is that after core cooling, athletes find they can lift more, run faster and physically work harder and longer than before. Even on the very first use of core control, strength and endurance increases of 20, 30, even 50% are regularly recorded. And we've seen countless personal bests. If you sprint 100 metres, the temperature in your muscles will rise slightly. If you sprint another 100 metres, it will rise again. This fatigues your muscle and causes you to run slower. If you can core cool in between these sprints, even for just a minute, and return the temperature of your muscle nearer to its optimum, you will run faster. Once your body starts to divert blood to the skin for heat loss, your muscles then start to receive less blood and oxygen than they need, and your heart has to work harder to pump blood further. So if you can core cool for two or three minutes and lower your core body temperature, your muscles can receive more blood and oxygen and your heart has less work to do, leaving more in the tank to boost performance. Years of detailed scientific studies have proven that it's only the combination of the vacuum and the controlled cooling that provides these dramatic performance gains. Cooling alone has little or no such effects. It's the pull of the vacuum that brings the blood into very close contact with the cooling cone, which is at a minimum of 10 degrees. So let's have a look at the scientific data and the testimonials to back all this up. When this initial discovery was made, we were astounded. The performance of muscle is limited by temperature. So as the muscle is active, it generates heat, its temperature goes up, and then it fatigues. So if we extract heat from the muscle, the muscle can do much more work. The endurance is extended. Core control has undergone years of trials and studies at Stanford University. In one part of this, 12 subjects were monitored power walking on a 9% incline in the hot room at around 40 degrees C and 40% humidity. The black line here shows that the subjects recorded temperatures were consistently lower using core control compared to no treatment, the clear square line, and compared to using the cooling glove minus the vacuum, the clear triangle line. We can also see that when using cooling alone, temperature was actually higher than no treatment. The black line here shows that recorded heart rate was also much lower compared to the control tests, proving that only the combination of the vacuum and controlled cooling provides performance gains. Cooling alone has no such effects. Both black lines are much longer than the others, showing that endurance was extended by 43%. The heart does not have to work as hard pumping blood to the skin to lose heat, leaving much more energy available to enhance your sporting performance. 
St Helens and Great Britain Rugby League fullback Paul Wellens kindly tested core control for us during his supersets of bench press. His conditioner decided to really test it and added 15 kilograms more than he normally lifts to his second two supersets. This was one of the first tests we ever conducted and I must admit I didn't think he would do it. The typical thing to see now, especially with the extra 15 kilograms on, would be for Paul to lift fewer reps, say two to four. But with core control, athletes can keep lifting the same weight or running the same times for much, much longer. And the conditioning effect of this over longer periods is phenomenal. If anything, Paul lifts this set more easily than the last. <laughs> During the trials at Stanford, tight end for the San Francisco 49ers Greg Clark performed sets of dips to exhaustion, resting three minutes between each set. Four days later, he core cooled for three minutes between each set. As you can see on the red line, he managed five sets and 105 dips. Using core control, he was still going strong on his ninth set and matching the number of dips on his previous third. By five sets, he had increased his capacity by 28%. And if you count the total number of dips, he nearly doubled his capacity. Recreating this in the UK with London boxer Josh over 12 sets, we saw the same increases. He outperformed his non core cool sets by 32%. Notably, he didn't even feel the need to remove his fleecy top even at the end of his core cool sets. It feels weaker but numb. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely works though. <laughs> it works. One of the main reasons for making this film is that we've encountered a lot of scepticism and disbelief about this product, bizarrely from some when they've just witnessed personal bests. So it's very important at this point to state that the years of recorded data from Stanford University, a renowned seat of learning, stands up to the closest scrutiny. And the doctors Dennis Gran and Craig Heller, who developed Core Control, put their name and considerable reputation behind the product and its sporting gains. Also, the conditioners and sports people who appear in this film have all given their time freely. Get your arms. What's that? Drive your arms. Drive That's it. Steve Carter, the conditioner at Leeds Rugby, was blown away by the results he saw. An inclined treadmill routine designed to improve your volume of oxygen intake and your critical power saw 50% increases when they core cool between sets, as we can see in the red columns shown here. Three times running without uh, core cool, we actually couldn't make the times. Uh, when we used core cool, um, he made the times regularly. Uh, basically, we saw a 50% increase in our capacity to run and recover. We just wanted to prove in our own minds that it wasn't just the training effect, and it obviously wasn't. Uh, and then that gave us the confidence to, to then take it into to the games and use it in the game situations. I used it at half time and going out and playing in the second half. When they came back in, they felt, said they felt a lot better having used that than what they would normally do after half, half time. Yeah. feel definitely a difference. Uh, the body just had a little bit more bounce in my step, you know, I could, I just had more energy, especially uh, opposed to when I came off the field in the second half. I felt like I could do a lot more things around the field, so I'd definitely say, uh, you know, it really helped. We used it in different weathers as well, so it worked in both. We felt stronger when they went back out in the second half and they were able to, to sustain their efforts along through the, through the second half of the game. You couldn't say that it didn't work. These improvements were that significant.